Hey there, if you've clicked on this video, it's most likely because your push mower won't run, uh, specifically this Toro. Uh, what you're about to see after this, I'm going to front load this video with, uh, this is working now. Uh, you're going to see, when it wasn't working, all the steps I went through to get to the point to where I found out what the problem was. Uh, I was wrong in the beginning, uh, complacent in my troubleshooting, I thought it was fuel. It turned out not to be a fuel problem, or not strictly a fuel problem. If you want to see uh, what it wound up being was an ignition problem, skip to about the last five minutes of this video. I'm just going to leave it all up in its entirety, at least for now, so you can kind of see the process that I used. But um, before you watch the rest of this, just know, always follow, just keep following it out and you will eventually find the problem, because that's what I did. Enjoy. Today I'm working on the Toro XT675 Recycler Lawn Mower. Uh, the 149 cc engine this has got the the dreaded uh, doesn't start or starts for five seconds and then dies symptom Let's see if I can get it to happen okay so clearly indicating some sort of fuel problem let's get it in the garage so we know just by that little test there that uh, We've got some fuel in there. Uh, the, your spark is good. Your compression is good. You don't have to worry about changing spark plugs or anything at this point or rebuilding your engine or, or, or anything. Uh, what you're going to have is basic airflow or fuel delivery problems. Um, and this shouldn't be too terribly complicated to figure out. So step one, uh, let's take off the air cleaner and see if we've even got one. And holy lord. Okay, so this one's a little dirty. and melted. Why is that melted? I've worked on lots of these. I've never seen that before. Okay. Methinks something is missing here. This part of the air cleaner housing, see this is a vent. I think that's a crankcase vent. There should be a flap that goes over this and directs air from the crankcase down into the intake of the carb. Uh, that would indicate that we got super hot air coming in here. So hot so that it's melting the rubber gasket on this terrible air filter. Um, we'll worry about that in a second. Uh, what I what I want to do now is uh, we're going to take this cover off so we can have a look at the top side and we're going to eventually gain access to the carburetor. Uh, we'll unhook this line, this fuel line. I think this is a this is a vent line for the fuel tank itself. Uh, so we'll unhook all that stuff. Right now, let's let's take off this top cover. Ten millimeter nuts that go on here. Uh, this one's only got two, so clearly someone's been in this before. Uh, probably also not another good sign. Okay, I've got these loosened up. Again, these are 10 mil. Okay, so the top part will come off here like so. Dump that out. And then this thing comes off like so. Uh, be advised, you got some little st standoffs here on these studs. Sometimes they get stuck to those covers over there on the bottom. So if something goes flying and you didn't know what it was and it looks like this, that's where it goes. Okay, uh, one other thing I want to look at on here because some of these automatic choke motors, um, and this may be part of our problem, but so some of them have an issue where uh, this system is fairly, in my opinion, is kind of complicated. Uh, a lot easier when you just had throttle controls on the on the handlebar up there and you just pushed it to choke and that activated the choke down here but these have uh, this is activated by so this is the choke it's sitting on the the muffler and it has linkage that goes down here onto the carb and you can see how when that moves that moves this linkage here okay which moves the butterfly in there, but it also then is connected all the way back to here. 
to this armature. Okay, so look at that black piece. Okay, so the, the silver piece on the front is connected to that black piece, which is connected to the butterfly, the choke butterfly in the carb, is connected to that silver rod, which comes back here to where my thumb is, which then articulates down here off of this thing, which is spring-loaded off of that thing. And it all comes back up here together. So when you, and I felt this click earlier, uh, I wonder if this was stuck. So you should be able to push this down, move it around, and get these things should work together in harmony is what I'm saying. If this isn't moving, if this isn't moving freely, you're gonna to want to check this. You're gonna to want to check that out. And this could be all messed up just because I've got everything kind of out of alignment but you can see that the the action here should be something similar to this all right all this works together and if this choke is stuck or if this linkage is missing or broken or warped um, you're not going to get it moving this butterfly here at all that is full range of that butterfly uh, so I may have told you wrong. This might be the choke butterfly right here. I bet you it is. The one where my finger is. Yep, because look, when I move that one, then we get a full sweep on that. That's what it is. So forget what I was pointing at earlier. That's probably your main butterfly. This is your choke butterfly right here. All of this should move freely, just like so. And then that probably does have some action here on the main butterfly, which is over here affected by this. And this down here is probably affected by maybe the, the speed of the crankshaft as it's going around doing its thing. Um, anyway, I know, I know that some of that is more than probably what some of you wanted to know but it's important to know that all those things should be connected they should be moving freely if something is missing you need to figure out what it is and put it back on there or all of this automatic stuff in here isn't going to work right so the next step and i'm sure what we're going to find in here is not good because when you look at the intake to that carb uh it's it's dirty and Judging from the condition of our air filter here, I am not surprised. So I think what we're going to find is a whole bunch of junk in the carb. Uh, some of it may not even really be visible, but we'll pull this housing off here for the air cleaner. Uh, we'll pull the carb off, take the bowl off, and uh, have a look at the contents they're in and give it a good cleaning. Okay, two more. 10 mil nuts. You're going to want to pull uh, whichever way is easiest. I think this hose is just going to come right off. Right off of the engine. Right there, which definitely makes me feel like that's just a crankcase breather port. Okay, and then here is the vent for the fuel tank. And then this is the fuel line coming from the fuel tank. So we'll just move this out of the way for now. There is a gasket that should be present between this and the carb. And you can see it there. It's peeling up. I'm not going to take that off. I just wanted to show you. Um, I, what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to order a, I'm going to order a kit. A whole new kit that comes with a new piece like this that has that air director on there. Um, I feel like something's going on with it being missing that is causing this to get uh, superheated. So get a new air, air filter. It's going to come with this. Uh, I'll put the part number for that kit in the description. Uh, I've looked at them before on eBay, 15, 16 bucks, something like that. Now our next step is going to be uh, we want to take this fuel line off and uh, either cap this line or 
uh, I know a lot on Briggs and Stratton engines, I can take the tank off and just kind of turn it sideways to keep fuel from coming out of here. Uh, we'll figure something out there shortly. And then this carburetor, as you can see, is there's nothing else holding it on there. So we can just take it off. We'll uh, carefully unhook the linkages, uh, both here and here. And that will have us off and free. All right, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and take the fuel tank off. And you don't really, really need to do this. You just disconnect the line and plug it with, uh, you know, golf tee or, uh, you know, big big uh, bolt or something like that. Just throw it in there. But uh, I'm going to do it because it's easier. Um, you're just going to take your same 10 mil socket. It's going to have to be a deep one. And this stud over here is just going to break loose. Uh, we took the one out over there. Might take a little bit of... Uh, might take a little bit of chooching to get her done because it looks like, on well, the other one at least, yeah, there's some Loctite on there. So those are Loctite, it is presumably from the factory. So you got those two, and then you've got down here one more, one more 10 mil, which got broke loose already. And with that one out, your tank is foot loose and fancy free. So now I should have the minimum of spillage when I go to take this clamp loose. I may have to set the phone down to do this, but give this line a little twist and it normally will break free. And you can start sliding it back. Just like so. Shouldn't get a whole lot of fuel spillage out of here. Watch it explode in my face. Okay. Just like so. And now, uh, when you do this, if you see fuel come out, you'll know that at least the problem isn't in your tank. It's not in your line. You're getting good fuel flow, at least down to the carburetor bowl. So if it doesn't start or if it starts and stops like this one does, the problem is not in the delivery to the carb. It's going to be from the carb to the intake manifold or the, or the you know intake manifold head assembly. Okay, by far the easiest way to get this carburetor off without wrecking all the, the linkage is to start here on this uh, choke assembly on the muffler. I've already loosened them. They're two 10 mil nuts. Okay, and then that will lift right off and then from there you can just unhook that guy off of it okay so that frees you up here and then undo just pull this little spring down at least on mine it's down if yours is on the upside just you know pull it up and over and then you can slide this thing off the studs and turn it and pop this linkage up out just like that and that way you don't wind up you don't have to mess with anything back here uh, you're not bending that linkage you're not bending twisting this linkage by far the easiest way now uh, this right here you can just pull up and out of that hole Normally you're going to have a gasket around the same size as that on your intake there. Uh, sometimes it's even just a, I think on some of the Briggs motors, it's just a O-ring that goes around a tube that goes in there. Um, so now uh, we'll get this thing on, on the workbench and uh, let's have a look, see what we find inside of it. Probably a bunch of schmoo. Okay, now our ever-faithful. 10 mil. Okay, and I've got gas coming out, so looks like we had good inlet into our carb. Okay, and there's our there's our bowl bolt bolt. Looks like it's got a little gasket on it there. 
Okay, then the bowl should come off. You don't have to take out the other one. This is just simply a drain bolt. Okay, now this should just come off. And it may be stuck, but what we're going to find under here is our float assembly. And depending on how long it's been since it was last put on, it could be pretty tight. Okay, and there you can see the bowl. Uh, bowl doesn't look too bad at all. And there you can see why you don't have to take out that other bolt because uh, it's not attached to anything. Merely a drain. Okay. Now here's the guts of the carb. This is your float. Uh, we're going to take this out. This is your needle that goes down into a seat. It's all held on by this pin here. I'll just go ahead and slide it out so you can see. Put that pin and the bowl over there. Okay, now this whole assembly should just pull up and out. Okay, there's the uh, the needle. It should have a, a pyramid looking a black tip on it there, which it does. Looks like it's in good shape and the float should not have anything in it. So when you shake it, you should not hear anything. If you do, that means you've got a hole in your float and the float is sinking and stuck down, which is allowing it to flood out your engine. Okay, and now from in here, uh, we're going to start cleaning. We're going to start cleaning. Okay, this is the seat in here. Let's see me some of that gas out. I'm going to take my carb cleaner and start uh, cleaning all this out. You've got a uh, an O-ring here, a seal for the bowl. Uh, this one looks like in decent shape. I'm not going to mess with it because if I do, it may crack. Um, if it does, I'll just get a new one. Uh, and we're going to start spraying the ever-loving crap out of this carb and see if we can get some of the stuff um, that might be stuck in there out of there. Okay, the only real difference from the last cut is that I took my can of uh, CRC throttle body cleaner, which is the, the best that I have found so far. It's about the only thing I'll use. Uh, and I sprayed it into all of the holes I can see. And when you spray it into a hole, you should see it coming out of somewhere else. So if I spray it in into here where my finger is, where the uh, needle and seat go, I should see it coming out of the fuel inlet over here and vice versa. And I did. Uh, you spray it down into the center uh, where, uh, I don't know, the jet. Uh, you should see it coming out of the center of the carburetor in there somewhere. Uh, there's another one. If you spray, uh, you see that passageway? That that oval passageway right down there. Yep. So you spray in there, you should see it coming out of the bigger of those two holes right there. That one I've kind of got center frame right there. Uh, you spray it in the, in the smaller hole, spray it into this one, and you should see it come out somewhere inside the carburetor. Anyway, you get the point. You spray it in one place, it should come out another place. Uh, it should be visible. You should be able to trace it down. If it doesn't, try to stick a, uh, I've got a, a pick that I use to try to gently uh, pick some of those orifices open. And just let the spray do its thing. Um, this stuff is pretty good at melting the crud. Uh, sometimes it takes a few sprays, let it sit. Don't be out in the sunlight when you're doing it because it evaporates too quickly. But here you can see there's a bunch of, uh, there's still a bunch of goo on here. Like, and I need to get that off because you don't want that coming off and then getting back in your carburetor that you just got going and then stopping it up again. Okay, uh, there was also a bunch of, of uh, goo in this hole right here. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff in there that I cleaned out. Uh, clean it all out, get it all off. Uh, use plenty of carb cleaner. So while you're in here, one thing you want to make note of is in this center passageway here, you can see down in there there's a, a brass insert. It looks like it's got a slot on there. Well, it does. Uh, that's the nut that holds in the main jet, the carburetor. So I'm going to take this out next. Uh, you're going to need a, a flat blade screwdriver that can get down in there. And then um, you're going to put it down in there. You're going to feel it pop. 
that didn't have much of a pop to it. But you want to take your time with that. You don't want to strip that slot out of that this little brass plug. You're going to have trouble. And then what you should be able to do Okay, and now uh, depending on how corroded that main jet is, you can see that other copper ring in there. Okay, it may pop out or you may have to get medieval on it. Let's see if I can show you here. Okay, when the main jet is still installed in the carburetor, you can see it coming up through the center of that passageway there. See the little copper tube coming up? And you may actually have to pry it down to get it out. Uh, I've had to do that before. Let's see if we can show it here. You just pry against it, against the top of the carburetor itself, and then that will, and you may have to use more force than that. Uh, that'll generally free it up, at which point it'll come out and you can drop it on the floor, like I did. And from here, you can see this is your main jet. Okay, all these holes, all those little bitty holes need to be clean, all of them. And then uh, once you've got them cleaned out, you can kind of go over this thing with some steel wool and shine it up. And what I generally use for cleaning out those little bitty holes is a needle kit. It works quite well. Generally going to take your smallest needle and it'll go all the way through a lot of these holes. Just make sure they're all they're all good just like so. Uh, make sure you can see all the way through that thing. Um, some of the holes are much smaller than others like these ones at the top here. I can't even get the needle all the way through. But just do the best you can. Work them around make sure they're clean. You're probably gonna find if yours is not running uh, some white uh, powdery stuff on there and that white powdery stuff is old gas that has dried up and left residue on there uh, one other thing I'll tell you that you probably should invest in if you like doing this stuff get you a set of uh, uh, jet cleaning brushes I got uh, this is the two pack I got on eBay I think for a dollar and then you can take one of the, the one that fits and you can run it down inside the, the bigger holes in here uh, and make sure that they are absolutely cleaned out it's just like cleaning a the barrel of a gun same deal okay make sure it's cleaned out hold it up to the light make sure you don't see any crud hanging around on the inside of it and before you put the jet back in the carburetor you're going to want to do the same thing to this just take your brush that fits inside the passageway Make sure that's good and clean. And if we get the butterflies open, we might see some light uh, passing through there or not. It's got an odd, odd angle, but I can see the light uh, coming through there. Uh, just make sure you don't have any hidden surprises in there. And then you're good to reassemble. Oh yeah, you've got that hole there uh, and that hole there. Make sure that those are not clogged. And when you've got this all shined up, got mine shined up pretty good. And drop it back in there. This plug, you're also gonna you're gonna want to do the same thing. Clean it up. It's got a hole that goes all the way through it. Make sure that it is clear. There you can see the light through it. Drop it down in there. Tighten it up. You're gonna make make it tight. Don't grill or torque it down. Okay, there's one last piece on here we need to have a look at, and I've already taken this out. This is the uh, I don't know throttle speed screw, I guess. Uh, you want, I had a hard time getting this out because it was already broken. You're just gonna back this out of that, 
Mine took 11 turns to get it out. And you can pop this guy up. And yeah, definitely cruddy. We're going to want to do the same treatment here. Okay, when it's clean, you should be able to see light through it. So I've got my, my work light set up there and then aim it towards that hole on the side. And there you, you see how you can see light coming through that pinhole and that brass piece. If you can't see light coming through there, keep grinding away at it. I can't even get the twist tie through that, that hole. It's so small. But just keep hitting it with car cleaner, kind of uh, gently poking it out with you know the smallest piece of wire you can find until you can get light to come through it and you should be able to get some car cleaner to roll through it. I've not seen one quite like this. Um, see if we can focus in there. Do you see right there those three little holes right there on the side? Those have to be cleaned out. They were completely gunked over on my setup and what I did to clean those out was take a just the twist eye, strip back the the covering on it, and then bend just a little bit of the tip down, and then that is just small enough to get into those holes and allow you to clean them. Okay, just small enough. And I had to uh, even when I got it in there like that, even when you can get it in there like that, some I had to take a uh, I had to take initially a screwdriver and kind of put that on the top of it and press it down into the hole. Um, but you're going to have to find something small. Uh, I have no idea what size this is, but it's going to be probably the smallest piece of wire you can find. And you don't have to bend the tip of it very much, just a little bit to get it hooked down into those holes and clean them out. There's three of them. Okay, you got to get those clean. Okay, all well, that's cleaned up, about as good as it's going to get. Uh, sprayed it out one last time. Now, have a look at the old needle here. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. So that is your needle. And that is what it should look like. It should have a rubber tip and it should be pointed out like a like a pyramid. Like that. If it's broken off, chipped off, if it's not uh, pliant, like super hard, it's something you need to replace. And you can see on this particular model, you've got a spring there that kind of holds it in place on the float. On uh, some of the Briggs models, it just there's no spring, so you slide it into the uh, slide it in the grooves on the float, and it won't stay in place like this one. It's, it's, it's a nice feature that it stays in place like that. So then that is going to go that's going to go back down into the seat here okay got it right down into the seat there and now we're going to put our pin in here to keep that straight okay and the pin just slides right in no real excessive pressure needed get it like that and then you should have a float on here that instantly drops when you put it right side up like so okay so it should be free and clear to move. And then if you want to make sure that it is actually uh, working as, a, as, a, uh, as it should, as that advertised, go ahead and put your mouth on here, pucker up and blow, and move this up and down, and you will feel the air flow stop. So I'm not sure how well that's going to turn out on the video, but you get the idea. Uh, brush your teeth. And if that is working, then you know, all we need to do is put the bowl on and uh, mount the carb and see what we get. Just like so. You're going to clean this guy up. Make sure you got a gasket on there. And as far as uh, torque, I don't know. Snug it down on there. If it's loose, it'll leak, and you'll know. Then you can tighten it up. Okay, now, you're going to want to put your springs back in here. And all this stuff, I'm just going to hook 
a small spring in there first. You're going to hook, pop that in. And remember, these are going to rotate this way. Now, for as far as putting it back on, you're just going to kind of twist the carb, get this linkage down in there, turn the carb back, slide it over the studs. Okay, you're going to hook in this little spring, which I find it easier just to come from the bottom. Just give it a little, little bend. Not going to hurt anything. Okay, and then it goes in just like that. And then we should still be connected back here, and we are. So now that we've got it started on here, we can go ahead and uh, slide this back. Just going to go ahead and hook that in like so. So you can go ahead and slide the two 10 mil nuts on. And at this point, you can go ahead and tighten these down. And that should have your linkage all wrapped up. What you're looking for is nice smooth operation all the way around. Okay, so you can kind of play with it from all angles. Make sure everything is doing stuff. It's not bound up on anything at any at any step of the way. Here I have just installed my new air cleaner box, and now you can see that piece that was missing from the old one. Uh, this is what it is, it's like a little air director. It takes that air from a crankcase and it directs it back down to the inlet of the carb there. Uh, probably just to keep some of that oily air off of your, your new shiny air filter. But this is the, uh, the air filter. This is how it goes in, kind of a tight fit. You just press it in, uh, facing that way. And then here's our new cover for all this stuff and this is a genuine Kohler piece in fact this the air filter and then this box with that air director on it these this was a Kohler kit I got on eBay for 12 or 13 bucks uh, well worth it to make sure that you got all the right stuff in all the right places okay folks let's wheel her outside see what happens I get a little uh, handy dandy starting fluid sometimes when you've had a complete teardown on one you need a little extra jazz to get going. Let's see what happens. So to check for spark, uh, you can leave your spark plug in, but then you're going to take your little spark checker, it looks just like so, pop it in to the spark plug wire, and you're going to, well mine clips on, I'm sure there's variations, some go like in line with the spark plug, but this one I've been using a long time. You just clip it on to some metal, get it grounded, and then I'm going to use an impact to help spin this thing so you can see. Let's get it off of compression. And you should see sparks coming out of that thing regularly. Okay. So if you see that, you know that uh, you're getting spark from... Uh, little spark box here down into the plug and if you've got a new plug you can assume that that part is good and then uh, you just got to figure out if it's fuel or what from that point all right so here we are at the tail end of this video 
And although maybe you can't tell it, I have been working on this thing for a couple of weeks. I've done all the, the standard stuff. You see me do the, the carb change outs, the, uh, the cleaning out of the carb, the air filters, all that stuff. Um, still not running right. Occasionally it'll run. Uh, might even start a couple times in a row and it keeps dying out on me. And then uh, when it's hot, when it's not, uh, sometimes it just won't start at all. So let me to wonder if maybe something is wrong with the ignition side. Almost all the time on these small motors, it's fuel. What if it's not this time? We know we got compression because it runs. It's got good healthy compression. You know that because if you just spin the flywheel, and of course I, I've got the brake on, but if you squeeze that handle, you'll feel it kind of chuff, 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 and you'll feel the compression release as the valves open and close. Um, I decided to go ahead and pull the old coil off of here and when I did that I saw a black line across this and it looks like carbon build up here on the uh, on that stator side of this coil as as the rotor the the flywheel itself it's got a magnet I believe this might be it here let's just find out yep that's the magnet. So as this thing sits here mounted and the flywheel goes by it with that magnet attached, um, that creates a little electromagnetic energy, comes out in the form of a spark into the spark plug and kaboom, you got a little combustion in the cylinder. That doesn't look right to me. Uh, and I don't know if it's just a uh, buildup from dirt, but I don't think so just the way it looks black. So I ordered one. I used one off of Flea Bay, and uh, I cleaned this one off a little bit, but it definitely does not look like that one did. Uh, these were a little rusty on here. I cleaned them off some steel wool. Uh, so I'm going to throw this on there, and we are going to see if perhaps that was the issue. Mounting this is pretty easy. This is a 10 mil here. This is also a 10 mil. The stud, it's like the other two up there that... Um, hold on the fuel tank. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to tighten these down just quite yet. Uh, I'm going to show you how to set the air gap in between this and the flywheel. And basically we're just going to use a, an index card. So I know this trick is, you know, it's all over the internet now, but I learned this a long time ago in the late 90s at WOSC Community College in Oklahoma from a small engine class I took. The instructor was Daryl. Uh, then you had Bodie and Homer. They were in there helping teach the young guys out. Uh, you slide a, a contact card, index card, whatever you want to call it. You can, you can kind of run these down a little bit. But the idea is the thickness of that card in there is going, that business card is going to be just enough of the air gap we're looking for we're going to spin this around to where the magnets make contact. Okay, so I just spun it just a little bit more. The magnet is going to bring in uh, both ends of the, of the steel part of this coil. Uh, see, I can move it back if I want. The magnet's going to draw it right back in. But the card is going to give us uh, the right thickness. So there will be a small air gap there. And then what we're going to do is just run these down, tighten them up, and then when we get them tight that won't move anymore. We'll slide the card out and our air gap will be set. Alright, so I've got these German torque down to good and tight. I slide this card out. Alright, so rather than just pulling it straight up, it's easier just to rotate the flywheel and then slide it out. All right, get that out of the way. And now you have just the slightest of gaps in between that and the flywheel, and now it's uniform on both sides. Because you can do it with a feeler gauge if you want, but that's a lot quicker. So thank you, Daryl, Bodie, and Homer. All right, and now what I'm also gonna do is take the steel wool, and I'm just gonna shine up the uh, the flywheel just a little bit 
if there's any schmoo sitting on there. Which this poor mower clearly hasn't seen the best of care, so there's plenty of schmoo all over this thing. And again, this is easier if you uh, if you tie down your handle up there, take the brake off of it. But this kill wire here did not come on this new one, so I'm going to transfer this over from here, uh, and it goes on to this stud on the brake with just a it's an eight millimeter nut. So I'm going to do that next. So it simply just pulls off the terminal off the old one, and then uh, pushes on the terminal on this one. this guy on here like so and we'll tighten that down some good old German torque and you can see here I've got this thing kind of arched up this way originally it was bowed to the bottom and that bow to the bottom had rubbed right there where my finger is I'll focus you right there where my finger is it had rubbed that clean spot on there on that bracket was rubbed through from the wire and it actually caused a uh, a rub spot on the wire. It just rubbed through the uh, the white part. It didn't actually rub into the copper on the wire, so I think we're all right. Now that we've got it angled this away, I think that'll be just fine. And this doesn't have to be, you know, smoke them if you got them tight. Use common sense. Make sure it's not gonna come off. And then slide this thing under here. Onto our brand new spark on the plug. I want that to pop just like that. Okay, now I'm going to slide that recoil on there. And uh, we're going to give it a rip and hopefully it'll work. Alright, so I've slid this on here. And I just kind of hand tighten those on. Let's see what we got. And folks, I think we may have found the problem. So that just goes to show, you never know what you're going to find on these. Um, if you've had fuel, what you think is fuel problems, and you've done all the fuel things, and you're still having problems, might pay to check out that flywheel key, and it might pay to check out that uh, coil, because that's where the problem lied on this one. Anyway, if you got any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to help, and good luck. Thanks for watching.